The most important tools for photography are your lens and the camera attached to it in that order. But it's also important to acknowledge that a lot of photographers suffer from GAS, or Gear Acquisition Syndrome. So if you feel like you might be coming down with something and the only cure is a new gadget, we've got six here that might be just what you need. First off, lighting. Light is one of the most important aspects of an image. If you're just starting out playing with lighting, we would recommend a continuous light. Unlike a speed light or a strobe, which are just fancy names for flashes, continuous lights are just lights. The really handy thing here is that you can move them around and get a sense for how the light changes before you take a picture. With a flash, it's a little harder to know how the light is going to affect your picture until after you take the photo. Continuous lighting is also clearly better for video. Our current favorites come from the company Aperture. Their ALF7 is an affordable light that comes with adjustable color temperature and is plenty bright. The ALF7 might be best suited to a separate stand, but it is small enough that you could mount it directly on your camera, though it could be a little unwieldy. For an on-camera light, the tiny ALM9 is a great choice. It's barely bigger than a credit card, but puts out a lot of light and comes with a built-in rechargeable battery. But there are a few times you might really need a flash, and we've got you covered there too. The Godox TT-685S Think Light is great, and it comes in multiple versions compatible with almost every major camera company. Compared to a continuous light, flashes are usually smaller and lighter, but capable of outputting much more light. This is great for times when you need a super high shutter speed to freeze quick motion, and you can also get creative results by bouncing the light off of the ceilings or the walls. A lot of high-end mirrorless and even DSLRs omit built-in flashes these days, which is a shame. Those tiny flashes weren't good for much, but they were great for softening the shadows you get on people's faces in bright sunlight. This Think Light can do the same job, filling in shadows and giving a big boost to any full sun portraits. Beyond light, a tripod is a crucial part of any camera kit. While camera stabilization has improved dramatically in recent years, there are still plenty of situations where you're going to want a tripod. We recommend the Magnus VT4000. This is a relatively affordable tripod system, which means it comes with both legs and a head, which is not always a guarantee at the higher end. A tripod is essential for long exposures, time lapse, or when you just want to make sure you're getting the sharpest possible shot. The Magnus' fluid head also means it can pull double duty for video. A fluid head is built around a series of interlocking plates or rings coated in dense or sticky liquid, usually grease, that helps smooth out motion. The upshot is they dampen vibration to enable smooth movement like tilts and pans, which is super helpful for getting stable video. The downside is that they are a bit heavier than the ball heads a lot of photographers prefer, but if you're only getting one tripod, it's better to cover your bases. If you are going to be shooting video, you may want more than just a tripod. Motorized gimbals have become a big part of filmmaking in recent years. These devices use motors and sensors to try to cancel out jerky movement and vibration, letting you make dramatic camera movements or even just walk smoothly. Our pick is the Zion Tech Crane 3 Lab, which packs powerful motors but isn't as heavy as some of its competitors. The Crane 3 is great for getting smooth tracking shots, circling, or following a subject. The innovative handle design also makes it easy to carry in a number of different positions for creative shots. Now, you may be thinking, I've got in-body stabilization in my camera, what do I need a gimbal for? Well, the two systems actually work great in concert, with the camera stabilization canceling out any fine judder or small vibration, and the gimbal smoothing out larger movements and shaking. The Crane 3 Lab can easily support the weight of most mirrorless cameras, and if you're looking for a cheap option, the older Crane 2 isn't quite as versatile, but it comes with the same solid design and great motors as the Crane 3 Lab. There are a half dozen companies making these powerful little stabilizers, but the Crane hits a good balance of power, weight, and price. Now, one thing not everyone thinks about is lens filters. I almost always keep a UV filter on my lens just for protection, but there are other filters out there that can be used for really creative shots, especially outdoors. Circular polarizing, or CPL filters, are one of the best things you can have in your kit if you're shooting landscapes or in bright sun. These filters cut out some of the sun's rays, reducing atmospheric haze and making the sky look darker and more blue. It can also cut out reflections on glass or water and reduce glare. Surprisingly, we found Amazon Basics CPL filter to work remarkably well and cost less than $20. 
The other filter we'd recommend is a Variable Neutral Density Filter, or Variable ND. ND filters just block some of the light from going into your lens, and you can rotate a variable ND to block more or less light. Now, this might seem crazy, we've just been talking about all the tools you can use to generate more light, but ND can be super useful. For landscape shots, it lets you use a longer shutter speed even in bright sun. Now, you'll need a tripod for this, but long shutter speed can give you some really cool results. Clouds or moving water will blur and soften while the rest of the image stays totally sharp. You can use the same effect for crowds, traffic, plants moving in the wind, and really anything with motion. ND filters can also be really useful for video. In video, your shutter speed is part of what determines the look of your footage, and you usually don't want to change it too much. If you're shooting somewhere bright, and you want to use a wide open aperture to get a shallow depth of field, you can use an ND to reduce the light incoming into your camera without having to mess with the shutter speed. Finally, if you are shooting video, you're going to want something to help with sound. Bad sound can ruin a video, and an external microphone will go a long way towards improving your clips. We love the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. It attaches to the top of the camera and plugs in via a mini jack. Aside from just improving sound quality, the Rode also comes with a shock mount that dampens the sound of the microphone being jostled or shaken around, and it also gets the microphone away from your hands. On a lot of cameras, the mics sit near where your hands naturally fall on the camera, and they can pick up a lot of handling noise. The sound of you pressing buttons, changing dials, or even of the lens's focusing motor. The Rode VideoMic Pro Plus gets the mic out of the way of all that, and should help you get clearer sound. The VideoMic Pro Plus runs for 100 hours on a rechargeable battery, and it's tough. If you're budget conscious, the other VideoMic models come with less features, but will still do a lot to improve your sound. Still, a shotgun mic won't cover every situation, and if you're going to be doing interviews, you may want a lavalier mic that you can clip to your subject. Rode's got you covered there too, with the SmartLav Plus, a tiny mini jack lavalier mic with surprisingly great sound. Whether you're interested in taking better photos or video or both, the best thing you can do is to practice and take the time to get to know your equipment. But if you're finding situations where you're struggling to get the perfect shot or looking for ways to stretch creatively, these gadgets can help you tackle most situations. Now go take some pictures.